Good. Well, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome, bienvenidos all. I am so grateful and glad to be joining you all today, tonight. I'm joining you from Olympia, Washington, where it's just tipped over into noon. And I'm Sandy Anone, your host of Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. And today it's our Sunday New Books Showcase. We have three phenomenal, phenomenal poets joining us today for our new books showcase, which we've been featuring here on Cultivating Voices Live Poetry since the summer of 2020. You know, we first did just all live features with poets coming on one at a time through the Facebook feature. And when we switched over to Zoom, we started this new format, our new book showcase to feature folks whose books were published during the pandemic, particularly wanting to help them showcase their, their new work since of course, all the venues had shut down because of the pandemic. Well, we know that venues are starting to open up, have been opening up. Uh, people are excited to see each other in person, but yet we, over the course of these few years, have created our own audience, an international, intergenerational, intersectional audience, and said, let's keep going. Let's keep featuring the poets so that we can continue to connect. Uh, across the time zones and feature the new work of our beloved members and Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. Well, tonight, today, this afternoon, we'll be hearing from Matt Mooney, Kashiana Singh, and Kevin Higgins. It is a reading that I have been looking forward to since we booked it, but I've been looking forward to having these poets come with their new books well before we booked the reading. So it is a true, true pleasure to have um, such accomplished folks with us this evening. And I wanted to let you know, our fourth poet, Andrea Deacon, who we were very excited to have join us this evening, all um, unfortunately, has come down with a stomach virus and did not feel suited to be on camera. I'll stop there with the description of that. All to say on my phone call with her, she said, I wouldn't want something unfortunate to happen while I was reading. <laughs> so um, we will be bringing back uh, Andrea in an upcoming new book showcase with her latest collection, Mother, Mother, Mother Country from Slappering Hall Press. But for tonight, we get to hear from three astounding poets with just three fantastic collections. I wanna encourage those of us who are here with us live in Zoom, of course, you'll be getting the links to the books. And I hope that if you have the resources that you will purchase one, two, three, and or more uh, books <clears throat> by our three readers for tonight. And of course, we'll be posting to our Facebook page for those of you who are listening uh, live and or watching the recording so that you'll be able to hopefully support the poets and their presses. Well, without further ado, let's move to our first reader for uh, for tonight's reading. And that is the ever, ever delightful, curious, and beloved Matt Mooney, who's been reading with us. I can I can see your first reading on our on when we were doing the live open mic on those Facebook feeds from 
many, 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 many moons ago, Matt Mooney, now feels like. You know, that night, was I confused or not? There was no, nothing, nothing so confusing as, uh, as uh, my first uh, trip uh, on, on Zoom. Uh, oh, it was your, <laughs> wow, it was your first one. Wow. And, yes. Uh, but thank God we have come to terms with it. Wonderful. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, now we can't live without it. So now, we can't, now, yes. now we can't live without it. And I can't imagine not being in connection with all of, with, you know, with all of these poets that we've met through the course of this time. Uh, the, the pen, you know, the, the pandemic had its silver lining, and I think it was bringing poets together from across the globe. Well, let me tell you a little bit about this poet, Matt Mooney, uh, that we'll be hearing from today. Matt Mooney is born in Galway, lives in Listow, Ireland, and his collections of poetry are droving, falling apples, earth to earth, the singing woods, steering by the stars. And Matt has been a winner of the Padre Leith O Conchubar Award of the Valley Bunyan Arts Festival. Matt serves as deputy editor of the Galway Review. And if you haven't checked out Galway Review, please do indeed. And his work has been published in the Blue Nib, the Stony Thursday Poetry Book, the Mill Valley Literary Review, and many other publications, including anthologies such as Live Encounters, Not the Time to be Silent Collected Work, and as I said, many, many others. His poems have been translated into Spanish for Hispanic, Hispanic magazines and He's been featured many times here, and it is always, always a pleasure to have Matt joining us. But of course, always thrilled to be able to feature a new book. So take it away, Matt, and thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Sandy, and thanks for the intro. And uh, it's a real pleasure tonight, a special pleasure to be able to read from my uh, new Irish uh, uh, collection of poems. It's called uh, Elu, published by Kosh Game in Dublin, and it's 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 a, it's a small book, but I'm so proud of it because all my other publications are in English, and this this contains this contains all my my poems in the in the Irish language. Um, the first poem I will read to you tonight is a poem called Down on Ein. Uh, if you translate that, uh, it means the glen of the ivy, of the ivy. And um, if if um, you 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 look at the, the English version of it, you'll, you'll find that it's called Glenine. And uh, the English versions are, are all published in in the, my other my other publications in English and the English publications. There's some English poems uh, with translations in 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 Irish. So here we have. Some translations, but but a few new poems as well. Down on ein, er sader go down on ein, er chosan kong no mo banya, tri vanta fi huil on treva. Na lotain or the ik farorin, ik sniv tri vani mont. Against the folly, a clear air on tea. Godicus can ye go kale. Jaw are in Dalic Toma, in Snellin the Dubba Samro. Face gone a quella air on rook. Conway the Rimu is a hail. Ramish to the kale or cousin order. Go looferlin, go bar on Knockoin. Er meshka le hivnas na hoiga. Glenine. High tailing is in high dole, half trotting it to Glenine, on the crooked cow track up through Larry's fields, locked dawns along the route, rushed through sheep gaps, barefoot bonded siblings straight after haymaking to the Roxborough River Bend for a quick dip to cool off. In pools we knew so well, 
drying out without towels by a simple helter skelter up the hill, racing to the top. Light breezes in our faces, tumbling back, intoxicated. And the second poem, thank you. The second poem is a poem called Gone Deedle, and that translates as homeless. This is set in Dublin. By the way, the last one, of course, was set in Galway, my home, my home county. Gone Deedle, Gone Deedle. E a glorag derka e mala a ha clea a rare. E in a he mar wuda. E stig in a ball a cuddle. In a stack, Erin's ahead. Is gone the colo the regga of ishka fool dove nilifa. Er a hli o kil van thine. E fragrant glen a mara. A thy fehiblesh. E i dahi a vesquetia. Agasarcunus on Aenoroin, on Tedocus Gosmeron, is a low shintamok egg, cup on hot clair in our drove. Fall of Gofoil, warrior. Cahim Baunish Jock, Capim Godlesham, Makala, a chock on a tree. Augustine Pisa Arrigan Egg Titan. And that translates again, as I said, as as homeless. A sleeping bag is home, thrown around him, seated on a city bridge, his only company there, footsteps of indifference making him invisible, chilling him as they pass, and the river down below on its way to Dublin Bay. Used to staying silent, catching now and then snatches of what is said in the evening rush, left out of all that is, despair gone to the bone. No hope of good times. His hand holding out the heart to fill paper cup. And I drop in a coin to hear the echo of it, sounding a happier note in the hollow of his heart. Now we move on to the title poem, Elu, which means escape. And in English, it translates to stepping away, in, in its own way, step, uh, escaping. And what are we escaping? The, the per person concerned is escaping out of a pub at closing time, or local closing time, we'll say. Um, here we go. So in a village called Kilcrease, in the county of Galway. Okay. Elu. Pionti Guinness Mar Funkiot Ako. Ese Iguidata Ak Polakaha. Hora El Kursi Clown Talun. A Corsana Ata Igor Akela. Er Scotta Bra Bolon Akonikadar. No score un atoil er deal eg dinna eg. Eg bogo sheer do on mar er dera. Agus a kosh came in a toaster egger. A badja loiva mar badja roiva. E correlate elu a walla do fain. A mock fina dorsha dova dubelta. A go hon ege, esh ia ele a vel. Tevlum ima kort, or the humor el, a chris sawala alor go quinchusuk, nevor dege ertunus shot nikile, 
اتانا برات دنوس سران تروی دوالا باکمید زن زنان لامپیر لسا نه تایپ شی اتا سپیلتا نقت سپاپا Stepping away. Using pints for punctuation. Farming friends around him holding earthy conversations, men to men discussions on someone's lack of kettle or a lovely score of lambs. Turning his back to the bar, measuring his every step. He implies a walking stick to aid his disappearance. Exiting black swing doors, writing off another night. In good humor going home, unconscious of the loneliness of the silent sleeping village. He sits into my waiting car and we leave the street lamps to the phantoms of the night. It's back to Kerry for my next one. And it's when the family were young. And um, it's a poem called Mofostin. And in English, the title of it is The uh, Vic. So that's how titles change and merge. So here we go with um, more fresh theme. Quimlius Vix led green, Egado Sedocidus, the Rome Cossetig Martigini in Pion, Excopper bring Lodi, Elin Longofono. Lemus om li seni. Tukkish nok to go train or fawn in a quinoiga. Is colour more fasting drista. Himlius vix erdot is brahas nakanav a bugger. A wound lemur misha is to vam. Eid bjog so rista is. Diaga, Marthalos, Dodd's Cree, Elanivi, Nahi, Felicon, Yokeluk, Mishnuil, Cuddle to a reach gone buck, Is course their whore on the buck, Margadi in our dean day. The Vic. Your cough in the night was calling for a cure. So I rubbed the vic on your baby back as the dreams of the night evaporated. Hailstones on the window pane stole your sleep as well. Your troubled chest, a cage so soft, the palace of your heart, such a fragile and divine creation conceived. Child of ours and of the night, brave butterfly of a girl, you slipped away to sleep as I tiptoed for tobacco, like a thief in God's garden. Still in Galway for this one, and it's about Galway itself, Galway City, that I love, and that's loved by many. Uh, so it's called just simply On Holland. Man le sira mi ul negrena, loiv le moons namra. Islam law, old store on Konya er Freud na Shupi, Isme Igfara er fair jalab, 
geen dalte in de dorst, ik talent aan het sloer. Meer trachte ik schreef tiket per kole. Is te maas aan ten noeis, oord is sonne. Maak oon na nauraan, ik goe al hart. Buskador schreide, in a he kosh falle. Mere ik bru is ik kru an kjoel. Bar daul stuma mar iskra bradon. Er bruch na hon ik fara fridde. Galway. Holiday midday in sunny July by moons of flags and flowers. Corner store, city of the tribes. In crowded shop streets, I watch a pair of statues painted into silence, drawing us ever closer. A traffic warden writing tickets. As tall Tomas of the Shanos, Macoin of the songs goes by. Street busker by the wall. Milking music from the box. Blind and patient fisherman by the river of humanity. Thank you. And to wind up, and thanks very, very much for the privilege and the pleasure of being able to read from ELU, my collection of Irish language poems tonight for you. Always a pleasure on, to be on Cultivating Voices with Sandy and Kim and John and you all. Thank you very much. So the last poem. Uh, it's probably fairly dear to my heart, and it's called Down on Tullish. This one, funnily enough, translates in English as Winterman, even though it should translate as the Glen of Light. Winterman. So, first of all, anyway, I'll uh, read Down on Tullish for you. Is groin lum hu fahap na groima eg shul fame yen. Is the coat of dove eg scuba na dar eg ahev an roid um pranona. Tusa is kuishlech eh yan on doev. Tusa a great gone trua na delova orga. Is a cudden on green in a colour rolua. Iha ona on. Otter lia lahanot. Nus of the kiln. Hoos us all gion. O vanister ne failure. Er vohor ribina. Ik to mount goreg. Seelcher er lasagum. On do kyot at kosk. Igual e fauna, she's good to all. On groin er ma hoer. Lina lumpy troida in a gown is in a gown. Mar lokran dokish is me gola walla tree gown on tullish. Winterman. I do not like you, Winterman. Walking slowly towards me with your long black coat brushing against the bushes, black as well this evening. It's your fault, Joel Timer. You stole the leaves of gold and sent the sun to bed early, donning your broad grey hat for Halloween above us all driving the grey road ribbon 
leaving Abbey Field behind. Headlights on at half past five against fuel onward march. Dipping downhill to Dua through descending darkness, ever trying to creep over me. A rising string of street lights up the Glenside football village, each orange glow my beacon. Thanks very much. That is the ever, ever affable and poignant Matt Mooney. And what, what, a, what a treasure to be able to hear the I, I love when we get to hear the home language and the translations and in, in translations in English. It's, it's because the, the multilingual facets of how you evoke the, evoke the language um, becomes such an important aspect of hearing the poems. And of course, I couldn't, I'd be remiss if, it, if I could, if I didn't say that you know, I've had the pleasure to be in Galway uh, a few times and the poems for me just evoked every, there's all the stone walls and and that city of tides where you said the, that river of humanity that runs through, it took me right back to, to my visits there. And thank you so much for bringing the work as you always do. And, um, I, I hope the collection continues to do very well and that we'll get to hear more from you very soon. Thanks, Sandy. Thank you. Well, as I said, folks, it is always a true, um, a, a genuine privilege and to be able to hear poems in their home language and in translation. And I, you know, I, I love that we have a platform that encourages and supports that. So great to have a book that is also featuring and supporting that notion um, that we heard from, from Matt Mooney. Well, we, as I said, today's reading is just, astounding and um, I am I have been waiting to have Kashiana Singh join us here on Cultivating Voices for a, a feature reading because you've been such an active member of the group for so long and, it, and it's so the day has finally come I'm so thrilled and uh, I'm I'm also just you know overwhelmed with joy that that uh, you're able to read from a book that I've ad admired also. And I, I, I remember reading when I first started reading reviews of Woman by the Door. Um, so folks, we are in for an incredible, incredible sharing of this remarkable poetry of Kashiana's. And let me just share a little bit what Kashiana shares about herself with us. Kashiana Singh calls herself a work practitioner and embodies the essence of her new TED talk, Work as Worship, into her everyday practice. She proudly serves as a managing editor for Poets Reading the News and her newest full length collection. As I mentioned, Woman by the Door has been re released by Apprentice House Press. Kashiana lives in North Carolina and carries her various geopolitical homes within her poetry, which I'm sure will be exhibited through the reading 
today. And if folks, if you have not, if you're not familiar with poets reading the news, it is something that I've subscribed to for a long time and it is an exceptional, exceptional uh, publication. And so I'm not only grateful for Kashiana's individual, you know, work individually as a poet, but also her poetry citizenship that that is mirrored through the work of poets reading the news. Um, it is a, it's it's a unique platform, and I really encourage those of you not connected with it to please um, take take a look online, and you will not regret the time that you spend there. It's an it's an incredibly well curated publication. Well, without further ado, please welcome Kashyana Singh. Thank you. Sandy, uh, voice check, can you hear me fine? You sound great. Perfect. Well, thank you. It is an honor and a privilege to be here with you, Sandy Kim Dawn. But as Sandy mentioned, I've been a fan and a follower of Cultivating uh, Voices since the very beginning. Uh, it is, it's almost uh, nervous to be sharing the stage with Matt and, and Kevin and everybody else because I have been inspired by every single reading that you've had here on Cultivating Voices. So thank you for, for having me, uh, Sandy. I will be reading, as you mentioned, from my latest collection, which is Woman by the Door with Apprentice House Press. Um, and let's jump in. My, uh, the, the book, just for context, and you mentioned uh, culture and language and music, the book is an amalgamation of my journey over the past 10 years, which is when I moved from India to the US. So, Without, without explaining too much, the woman by the door uh, carries three spaces, the doorway, the inside, and the outside. And so therefore the poems in that are poems of transition, transition of home, place, language, life, uh, political situations, as well as just everything we've been through in the last couple of years. And hopefully you'll see some of that flavor through the poems I choose to read. The first poem I'm going to read is called Portrait of a Mother in America. And let me go ahead and read it. And I can, it, it should be obvious in terms of the context. Portrait of a Mother in America. You, are an unstoppable maverick. You tenderly define the fossils we shall be. You are restless as you lie awake. Your forgiveness is now a lung emptied of breath. You are monastic as you listen to the bells ring. Your joy transient in yet another uncounted night. You are a widow wailing at the steps of a lake a practiced palanquin bearer of skinned surrender. You are a witch with long arms, they embrace bodies showered from dilating skies. You are songwriter, fact narrator, watchwords are written in your inherited ink. You are awake, you awaken, teasing your dreadlocks into witness stands for the dead. You are yesterday's battles and tomorrow's cries. You beat in ballads, rehearse poems to throbbing drums. You are louder with each breath. You penetrate a deafening normal inside and outside. You are repetition. You sketch a scrawl that leaves scars on a country's cardboard map. You are hunger. Your sharp tongue bites into cornbread, ready again for another funeral pageantry. You are unabashed. You offer your breast to beating chests, fostering care for conjugated loss. You are recocheted through our mistakes, 
Your prayer is a pause inside vacant throats. You are conversation to our silence. You pour questions into our coagulated eyes. You are a mosaic of common journey. Your pilgrimage is to places where multitudes died. You are sister, you are princess, you dance in compassion, holding your head high. You are your ancestors, you are healer, you make garments of their velvet flagellated skins. You are language, farmer of roots. You nourish the irreverence of all marching youth. You are baptized, you are ostracized, you drink from the thirsty fountain of wakeful lives. You are time of all moonless times. You rudder the sea to the sky. You swallow meteorites. You are inadequate in your cones. You ache in psalms that sing into life and afterlife. You are relentless, a stitcher of quills. You fill it with absence, thread it with sinew of barren wounds. Portrait of a mother in America. I'm gonna shift um, staying, as you can imagine on the theme of women, woman, womanhood. And this poem is called Becoming Planet. Becoming Planets after Greta Thunberg. If I could be a planet, I would like to be Mercury, bearing myself to the sun those times when I need brightness, seven times stronger than myself. Or maybe the clumsy, clumsy Uranus, stuttering sideways, self-effacing but living the moods of my 27 moons and never having to explain myself before or after menopause. I have even speculated Mars, red in the face, evidence of my travails receding further into my atmosphere. I would mock the men who stumbled for oxygen after kissing me. Well, Maybe Neptune is who I will be. Distant, forlorn, and cold to touch, icicles inside my craters as I pace centuries of black holes, no one to fault my goddess. I am a planet though, as every woman before. I bleed myself hollow, I swallow my volcanoes, I spin for all before me who were dwarfed, I draw orbits around names, of all our departed souls, I weave a Kuiper belt with the fallen ringlets of my hair. I gather our screams till they pierce through the wings of these stars. I repeat all of the above. I rotate, I revolve, I burn, I am born into the firmament above. I become my solar system. My tears crystallize into brooding planets swaying to the blah, blah, blah of a flawed earth as she still manages to trudge along, becoming planets. Thank you. Thank you. This next poem, um, is called I Stopped Counting and a Little Trigger Warning. Uh, it's a poem about rape and rape of minors. Uh, it's triggered by an incident, but there have been more than one. Um, and if you look up the news, you'll see a couple of new incidents from India, but this is not just about India, it's about rape and the culture that we generate. I stopped counting. Oh, Ma, I am numb, a shadow. No matter how I hug my knees, I stay enclosed since the day I swallowed corpses of forced desires, startled silences, 
Sometimes the clock forgets to chime. Days dare to hurtle into night. I am drenched, palms down, flight ready, in a corner behind a dead door. The footsteps of each day tense and too loud, predatory. I sit wooden, still waiting for the chariots of moonlight. Sometimes, Ma, you forget about me. I feel you, Ma. You and your hustle, bustle in the kitchen, gur with key, sizzling hot, your palu tucked tight at your waist. Oh, Ma, that night was their feast, Ma. That night there were so many mouths, so many mouths, so many hands, so many men, so many needs, secreting feral means as they came, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I stopped counting. They masticated animal and prey, my face, my breast, my thigh, my neck, an orgy, state of hunger, my finger was hurting Ma. Ma, I stopped counting at nine. But there were so many, Ma, uninterrupted butchers, they slept and snowed, afterwards sprawled. I bit myself and my wounds and my bleeding tongue and ran and ran and ran till I saw the bonfire. It was Lori, Ma, wasn't it, Ma? I love good with tea, Ma, did you ever feel raped? As you lay outstretched, did you sometimes quiver when he exited his manhood, satiated, grunting? I love good with he, sizzling, hot on the surface, like ember on a pyre. I stopped counting. I'm going to shift um, to something a little more personal, and this is about death and loss, and it's called My Brother's Dog, Laika. Bring it up. My brother's dog, Laika. For years, I've put a sound on a leash. Laika, your sparkling slender body perfectly fitted into the world. Your nostrils quivered in sleep, making others jealous with how you got his attention. Named after the first mongrel in space, Laika. Laika, who joined the mission to validate space to prefix their story while fulfilling a sad end with a pounding heart. You orbited him like a prayer, consistently stable and kind. He held you like he was your earth, your eyes shimmering in sharp response like darts to his deepening sound. Catch, catch, he said. Go catch, Laika. You were tonic to his youth, an unspoiled brat. Like him, you too gazed into the eyes of others with a sweetness that crumbled their worlds. I saw in you and him an animated companionship. Each time you gracefully knocked at the door, racing, tumbling, folding, ears flapping, nearly blind into his arms. His days glowed in your presence, Laika, your lives tucked into each other as if in knowledge of what was imminent. Your pictures bristle with friendship, simple moments, so expansive, you staring at the camera, both breathless, it jolts me back. It is raining today. I heard you bark outside, lingering as you did at the edge of his heels, I nudge your scent away. Go catch, Laika. I say, go catch, Laika. It makes me want to ask, though. Are you both together now? Does he lean against you? In his blue plaid shirt, 
his cuffs unbuttoned, convenient, you at his side, quiet as you chew, so familiar, so present, so near, his hands reflexively linger around your neck, ready for a quick walk. My brother's dog, Laika. Time check, Sandy. Do I have time for one more or am I at time? Yeah, let's do one more. Right. This one's called In My Nani's House, Curds and Way Were a Religion. In My Nani's House, Curds and Way Were a Religion. Rendered warm, the milk in homage to perfect temperature, every drop just enough, dripping a muted prayer on my nani's wrist. Stately it would reside on the dining table in a glazed terracotta pot, its tenderness an immaculate gospel. Spoonful smooth like rays of moon, an attentive healing of my acidic chest, kindness revealed after rested night. Persisting in pause and patience in my nani's house, sallow in its maturing, whisked tidily into incubation, the ritual of curd making harnessed my attention for precision and for process, for transformation, an unveiling of the delectable aphrodisiac on albester mornings, always a ceremony. I have failed to assemble curd like that. Mine settles in watery mouthfuls of regret. It tastes hollow, like an afterthought, forgetting to tighten its surface muscles. It collects into itself, refusing to be real curd, metamorphosized. I have tried so much to do what Nani did, but the curd I make always looks like half-fulfilled wishes, as if it is telling me to have more patience, wants me to breathe in, breathe out, and stir the silence. The chewy curd I assemble is reluctant, uncondensed, unlike the metabolic grace in my nani's house. Sometimes I wish I had stood beside her more often, watched her more closely, her eyes an emblem of agni, akash and expanse in her arms. I wish I knew then that she was Prithvi, holding hostage and intoxication. I wish I had gathered stillness, surrendered my questions to making of good. There she is, looking at me sideways, sorry Pallu sweeping to her waist, a shining plate, pomegranate lips. Curds and way in my nani's house. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, what a reading. The book is Thank Woman you. by the Door from Apprentice House Press. Kashiana said, thank you for your voice today. You know, the, 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 the power of the planetary. Oh my God. The, the litanies, the litanies that your poems embody from the portrait of the, the, you know, the portrait of a woman in America through I Stop Counting to every morsel of that curve. I could hear in, in every line in your work that 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 celestial power that comes from the language. Oh, so be, so incredibly rendered. Um, I already can't wait for the next reading. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Sandy. Thank, thank you for you. having me, and thank you, thank everyone. You. Thank you, listening. thank you, folks. You are listening today to Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. It's our new books showcase. And we've got a wonderful live audience here assembled, of course, but so many of you also will be, watch hundreds of you will be watching this 
on our recordings as you do every week. And I'm grateful to those of you that are so devoted to watching, not live, uh, knowing that our audience is, is, is quite vast. So a special shout out to you folks today and of course to our live audience here from folks from across all the time zones here in our live audience, Cultivating Voices. Well, uh, we're to our final, our final reader, one of my Salmon Poetry brothers. I am so grateful to uh, Kevin Higgins and all that Kevin cultivates in the multiple communi poetry communities that you and Susan and your cohort uh, put together uh, in Galway and you do many things online, of course, as well. Uh, I really am astounded by your, your poetry citizenship and your energy. And um, it's, it's been as well, of course, as your poetry, I'm thinking about what Kashiana was talking about and about the, you know, the 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 geopolitical aspect, and and you are a poet of conscience, um, and I'm grateful for the poems that you that you publish because you know that often you will get backlash for some of that, and yet you are fearless in your voice and your manifestation of your work and in putting your work out there for us to be able to be greater greater contributors to this community that we call the world. So I thank you so much, Kevin, for, for all that you contribute to poetry. Thank and, you. Well, let me share with you a little bit more in the more formal aspect. Kevin Higgins is the co-organizer of Over the Edge Literary Events in Galway. He has published five previous full collections, including The Ghost in the Lobby and Sex and Death at Merlin Park Hospital. His poems have appeared in myriad newspapers, magazines, journals, anthologies, and he's been a satirist in residence and had his work incorporated into novels, been quoted widely and vastly and broadcast on the radio as well. There's nothing that Kevin Higgins does not do. I am convinced. Kevin is a, a, a truly, truly experienced and inspiring. I, I've met many of the poets that have worked with you uh, in your workshop facilitation in the, and as the creative writing director for National University of Ireland, Galway's International Summer School, and as a teacher at NUI Galway's Bachelor of Arts Creative Writing Connect program. In December 2002, Kevin was both expelled from the British Labour Party, of which he was an overseas member for publishing his poem, tribute acts in Socialist Appeal magazine. And on that very same day, he was awarded Poet of the Year at the Labor Heroes Awards event in Conway Hall, London. Well, this year, Kevin received a dozen nominations for the position of Ireland Chair of Poetry, Ireland's Professor of Poetry. His newest collection, I love this title so, so much, is ecstatic from our much beloved Salmon Poetry, would you please welcome the man of consequence and conscience, the irrepressible Kevin Higgins. Thank you, Sandy. And thank you <coughs> to you and to Kim and to Don. And I know how much work goes into uh, beginning and especially maintaining events like this and how vital they are to the poetry community and that idea of citizenship, I really like. 
Uh, also, it's great fun. It's a good way to spend a Saturday, a Sunday evening, days wrong, uh, listening to uh, Kashiana and Matt. That was a love. Those were lovely readings. Uh, so thanks to them too. <clears throat> I've had some fairly grotesque health challenges over the past week or so. So I thought I would start with this poem, and it's from the book. What's following me? These days, I'm followed everywhere by my own skeleton. I see it looking out at me from the windows of buses on their way to places I once lived, or clattering about the break time playgrounds of schools I used to occasionally attend. In the butcher shop, I spot it, a few behind me in the queue. It tails me at an increasingly indiscreet distance all the way home. In the doctor's waiting room, it sits right across from me and clacks its jaws with the confidence of one who already knows the diagnosis. After making what felt like love, I glance across at the chair on which we left most of our clothes and it's sitting there with exactly the right number of missing teeth. Some nights it grabs my arm, hisses that it'll soon help me free myself from all this disgusting flesh. So uh, that's for openers. And the second poem I'll read um, is, was inspired by a poem by the Chinese American poet Kathy Song called Heaven. And uh, her poem starts, it's a Chinese American uh, immigrant. I think when we die, we go to China. And I gave that exercise out to a group during the lockdown. And I started, it started working in my own head. And I wrote a poem about when we as a family lived in Coventry in the English West Midlands between 1970 and 74, where I started school because I was born in uh, London and then we moved up to Coventry. And I always think of it as the golden idyllic days of childhood, even though Coventry is not normally associated with that. There is even a phrase in English, in England, being sent to Coventry, where, um, which means no one speaks to you. And uh, it was because someone in a car factory broke a strike and they did not speak to him for the following 35 years. That's the sort of place it is. But for me, it was the, it has a golden kind of glow uh, around it. And oddly, I had never written a poem about that period of life at all, which I thought was kind of strange and interesting in retrospect. Heaven after Kathy Song. I think when we die, I go back to Coventry, a version where it's permanently 1973, where my cousin Mary is permanently five and not yet our accountant. We play cowboys and Indians in small, with small plastic figurines who ride tiny plastic horses. And the world is exactly as it should be, where I'm permanently the miniature man in the passenger seat of my dad's van as we roar up the A45 to our weekly Thursday evening shop at the one stop on the verge of Birmingham, where I'm permanently playing for the first time, shown south of Gary Owen, slightly out of tune with the others on my new button accordion on the big stage at the Kerry Men's Club, where I'm permanently stop tumbling backwards through the kitchen door's glass for the Sunday evening entertainment of the entire family and acquiring the one scar that's on the outside, where the old lady at the end of our street is permanently putting vote conservative in her front window. And I have no need to hate her. The car factories down the road, Rolls Royce, Chrysler, Jaguar are in any case permanently ruining every other day for her by walking all out on a show of hands. 
the Secretary of State for Education is permanently Margaret Hilda Thatcher. And despite her technically being in charge of boys my size, I've never heard of her, where I'm permanently learning my first few fuckle in preparation for the return to the place mom and dad call home. I'm permanently correcting my tutor for putting County Clare in the wrong province of Connacht. And at the age of barely six, I'm disgustingly pleased with myself, where I'm permanent, where everyone in our family is still miraculously talking to everyone else. And the world is permanently as it should be. So that's my Coventry poem. Um, the next poem I read that Delaware in the US is the least visited state by tourists. That's something I started being mischievous very mischievous uh, with that. Advice from an Irish poet to the people of Delaware. Do something desperate. Then years from now, charge people to come remember it. Employ a local enthusiast as the Wilmington's throttler. Allow him prowl your less desirable neighborhoods doing what his nickname implies. Then name a popular TV series and walking tour after him. Or let Joe Biden corral his opponents into Delaware sportsplex, wire their bits up to the mains and let starving police dogs at them. Within 50 years, you'll be the Santiago of the North. There are other examples you might follow. Cambodia, for example, would today have little to attract its ever increasing carnival of tattooed backpackers if brother number one hadn't the foresight to number and photograph all 1,386,734 enemies of the people before they were processed. And where would the economy of West Mayo be if the God sent blight hadn't brought lines of famine hungry victims, famine hungry Japanese tourists to trek across the calcium deficient bones of our ancestors. As the old Irish saying says, whatever you do, admit everything. For no one hates Holocaust denial more than the old woman who runs a bed and breakfast five miles from Auschwitz. So that's pretty disgraceful there. Uh, it would be uh, a good and interesting approach if they took that to uh, bringing tourists to Delaware. I don't know if they'll take me up on that. I have a feeling not. I saw a uh, conversation on Facebook, which I observed and stayed out of. about who was the most risk-taking poet in Ireland. And between ourselves, which of course it never is, some of the most banal people in Western Europe were involved in this uh, discussion. So again, it set me off down a, down a troublemaking uh, uh, route, the most risk-taking poet in Ireland. My split infinitives, clearly the work of a man who, who dries his clothes recklessly, sometimes not emptying the lint tray two cycles in a row. And a height, at the height of my experiments with formal verse, I once drove a Ford Focus at a tantalizing 29 kilometers per hour when the legal limit was 30. During my decadent prose poem phase, I tiptoed past a locked apartment door behind which I'm pretty sure there was an orgy going on. <clears throat> Under the influence of Samuel Taylor Coleridge, I once took one more paracetamol than I should have. 
in a rare outbreak of concrete poetry. I yesterday regrouted the shower tiles myself, trying to mimic Rimbao vanishing in Abyssinia back when I was young and even more foolish than this. I once accidentally went to Dorset. My contribution to metaphor in the 21st century is at least as important as the cat yawning. Risk for me is, get, is going to a different garden center at least every five years. And the next poem is called The Unnecessary People. And it is inspired by Jeff Bezos and Co's various uh, attempts to visit outer space. And uh, I think the pandemic brought it home that no one said, my God, I won't be able to find an entrepreneur during uh, the pandemic. They worried about being able to buy food, about uh, having, having someone to treat them if they were ill, uh, Deliveroo, you know, the person who delivered food, all of those people became absolutely uh, the lifeblood. So this is called, for those other people, the unnecessary people. When this world and the money with which you bought it have been abolished and all the broken things fixed and people like me in total control, you'll be allowed come and go from your gated community of the unnecessary as, uh, and you, so you can see how great the world is without you. We'll even employ a retired supermodel to bring you your tea and when the time comes, change your nappy and buy you a board game which, which lets you pretend to again buy the world with money that was once real and absolutely does smell and give you a calculator so you can work out what the corporate tax rate was in places that no longer go by that name and leave on your bedside locker a notepad in which you can draw pictures of the spaceship on which you'll make your final escape. And just two more. I've never read this poem in public uh, before, but it's actually, I'm reading it in response to some news in Galway in the last couple of weeks where one of the local councillors, the member of the Galway City Council, a Michael Crow, made a very inflammatory statement about uh, the city council were planning to uh, buy a house in, in a suburban housing state uh, in Renmore in Galway, and uh, that a traveler family would live in this. Travelers are Irish gypsies who have been quite viciously discriminated against. And Galway uh, gave the, uh, uh, the world a new word in the 1970s, which is rahunery, which was the shorthand for violent anti-traveller uh, movements. Uh, Rahun Road is a stone's throw from uh, uh, where we are. And uh, in, uh, there were various attempts to burn people out of their houses in the 1970s or to burn a house down if it was known that travellers were uh, getting it. This actually wasn't, the poem wasn't inspired by, by uh, that. Uh, so Galway really is the kind of Mississippi of um, uh, Ireland in that issue, in terms of uh, if what Mississippi was to segregation, Galway is to anti-travelerism. And there's always some politician ready to use it. This uh, was actually inspired by a British MP who was meant to be a Labour MP who uh, was giving out leaflets promising to deal with 
gypsies and travelers. And uh, she said she didn't realize what it said. The candidate explains, I didn't know the meaning of incursion or dealt with, the negative connotation until this morning, didn't realize the possible definitions of parasite, rubbish dump, bad human material, didn't know until this morning the connotations of dismantle, pikey, assimilate, the negative meanings of scum, child thief, branding iron, didn't know dirty, a social expel, the con connotation of a people involved in the manufacture of human freaks, didn't know the meaning until now of rahunery, pollutant, pharyngimus, the problematic side of those over the age of five being taken away and civilized. Didn't know the meaning of the devouring, the cutting up or behind concrete walls, the negative connotation of whatever kills one, whoever kills one shall be guilty of nothing. Didn't know the meaning of deport until I saw it done this morning, clean as a police superintendent's signature or a councillor's campaign for re-election. I'd like to dedicate that to uh, Councillor Michael Crow uh, this evening. Um, and the final poem is kind of an elegy. It's uh, my friend James, who uh, I met in 1990 when I lived in London and was very hyperactive in the campaign against Margaret Thatcher's poll tax, which uh, did, was successful. Not many campaigns are successful. That was, by the end of the year, she was gone. Uh, and there was a huge, there's a huge iconic demonstration, uh, which is, uh, had a bit of a riot attached to it. If you uh, look it up on YouTube, you'll find it, that March 31st, 1990. So I met James during that campaign and he lived, he lived here for a little while then in the 90s, then he moved to Germany and he, uh, um, in about seven years ago, uh, his cousin got in touch with me uh, to say that James was missing and had I heard from him and I hadn't. Uh, for a couple of, yeah, I would usually hear every couple of years of the phone. And um, he hasn't showed up since. They haven't heard from him. So we have to presume that James is very sadly no longer with us. So I wrote this. I also thought, given all the political turbulence of the past several years, he would have phoned me to say, Kev, what do you think of this? So this is called past. Past clicks ajar the box you thought you'd locked it in and starts walking in your direction. Under its right arm, it carries a kitten you thought long dead, which is delighted to see you and licks your hand in the hope of butter or salt. Past fishes your friend out of whichever European river he went into and deletes the message you got from his cousin asking if you've seen him. His hair still the same, Judas Iscariot red, yours its increasingly inferior version of its ex self. You talk hours about coming revolution, which like the kitten you remember burying, but which now magically offers you an opening comradely hand. Past takes its spade, and digs up your old defeats, offers to turn them into victories. If you're prepared to gamble on losing again and pain, which even now haunts like the tooth you tried but failed to extract yourself. Thank you very much to everyone. That is and will forever be Kevin Higgins. Um, as I said, the, grateful for your poetry, your voice, your contributions. It's so interesting that 
you mentioned this idea of this vote for the the most risk taker of poets and whether there's a vote or not and in in an in a, in an, in a campaign that is that is on the up and up i would i would vote for you for that but i but you don't need to vote for that it's just like you read the work and you appreciate the work and you appreciate what you put what you offer in without thinking of well knowing there's consequences and still taking the risk no one needs to be voted the most risk taker you just do it and that's what you've done that's what you've done throughout your career and again folks i encourage you to get the latest collection of kevin higgins as well as previous ones the newest collection however is ecstatic from salmon poetry everybody we've list we've just heard three remarkable voices today in our new book showcase we began the hour with matt mooney kashiana singh and closed with kevin higgins how about we take a moment and unmute ourselves and show our appreciation for this constellation of poetry that we've here, been a few here. Bravo, bravo. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, I hope you all have been enjoying our new format that we began this fall of beginning with our poets focus. And thanks to those of you who participated and or have had the opportunity to listen to last week's program, our poets focus reading on the theme of change. And I, I can't help but think that this reading really helped carry that theme, brought that theme forward from last week as well, the significance of, of how change manifests itself in all our cultures and our, and our ways of being. Well, our second reading of the month is always our new book showcase, which you've been enjoying, appreciating today. And next week, join us for our final reading for the month of October. It's our wild card open mic. You are the features. That'll be next Sunday, right back here, here on our Zoom Bat channel here for Cultivating Voices, live poetry. It's our wild card open mic. Join us, 15 minutes signups, to be one of the featured poets 15 minutes before the reading begins uh, here in Zoom. We usually have about 12, we have 12 features and we try and are fairly successful at getting to a waiting list. So join early, the sign up does fill up within minutes. Well, everyone, that is it for today's reading. It's been quite an honor to have these three illustrious poets with us today, Matt Mooney, Kashyana Singh, and Kevin Higgins. And of course, to have all of you joining us here live in Zoom, and those of you watching us live on Facebook. And again, a shout out to those of you who'll be watching this on the recording. Thank you, as always. I appreciate, we always appreciate the comments for those of you who are saying I'm a devoted, I'm devoted to watching the program and we appreciate the hundreds and hundreds of you who do tune in on your own time on our recordings on YouTube and Facebook. Well, that's it for today, my friends. Until next time, I wanna encourage you all to please, 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 
Take very good care of yourselves. Take exceptional care of your beloveds and, and continue to write your remarkable poems. This is Sandy Noon for Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. Take very good care and we'll see you next Sunday.